Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Sunday, June 2nd, 2024. I pray that you are doing well this morning and I pray that you are in good health. May God continue to bless and keep you and your families. Our reading today comes to us from 1 John chapter 5, reading from verse 1 to 13. And it says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that beget loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that come by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God which he had testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God had the witness in himself. He that believeth not God had made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave his Son. And this is a record that God had given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that had the Son hath life, and he that had not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you, that he believe on the name of the Son of God, that he may know that he have eternal life, and that he may believe on the name of the Son of God. Amen. We give God thanks for his words this morning. Now, the reading this morning tells us that whosoever believe that Jesus Christ is Christ is born of God. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, what? You are a child of God. Because in believing in Jesus Christ and expressing your love towards him, you are basically saying that you believe in God the Father and also you are expressing your love towards him. And further down you will, you will hear why. It says, by this we will know that we are the children of God when we keep the commandments of God. So, in other words, if you love God, you will keep his commandments. Simple. That's what it's saying. And those of us who are born of God, when we have given our life to God, when we have surrendered to God, we become overcomers of the world and we have gained victory over this world through our faith in him who is able to help us to overcome. Amen? So Jesus, when he came, what did he do? Before he began his ministerial work or his ministry, he was baptized. And then he what? His blood was shed at the end of his ministry. So those two records testify who Jesus is, the lamb that came to save the world, and also that we have to be washed of our sins in order for us to be saved. So the baptism signify a transformational period of our walk with God. So we're moving away from one chapter of our life to a new chapter. And so the water signifies the washing away of our sins. The blood do, does the very same. The blood signifies the washing away of our sins. 
Do you get the connection? So both works together and both mean the same thing. And then you have the Holy Spirit, which is the witness of these truths. So the, the Spirit bear witness of these things, right? Now in verse 7, it says that there is three that bear record in heaven. Now, this is one verse that speaks to the, 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 the unity or the triune God, which a lot of people don't believe in. But that is why I say that when we are studying the Bible, we have to go with the understanding. And that is why I always say that when we are studying the Bible, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us. Do not draw your own conclusions because it's going to lead you in a very destructive path. So this is one of the verse that speak, you know, when we talk about the, the triune God. So it says that there are three that bear witness in heaven. Or who are those three? It says that the Father, so God the Father, the Word. Who is the Word? Jesus, right? According to John 1, it says that in the beginning was what? The Word and the Word was what? with God and the word was God and the word what became flesh and did what dwell among us so we understand from that verse that the word here is speaking to Jesus so that's the second person and then it moved to the third person which is the Holy Spirit how many is that three so we have God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit three the triune God but they are one and I know that's a concept that is so hard to understand sometimes. But it's not that difficult when you think about it. When you speak about the oneness of God, it, it is talking about they don't operate by themselves. Let me explain. So the son don't decide to do something and the father don't know. Or the spirit don't do something and the the, the father don't know or the son don't know. Let me break it down a little bit more. When you get married, for those of us who are married, when we get married, the Bible says that what? A man should leave his father and his mother and cling to his wife and they shall do what? Become one flesh or they shall become one. Now, think about it for a second. The Bible says you become one. Does that mean that you join to the person or you sow yourself into the flesh of the next person so that you can be one with them of course not that would be crazy but that is not what the bible is talking about here oneness in how they work so let's use another word that you can understand unity the unity of the father son and the holy spirit they move as one entity as much as they are three distinctive personalities they move as one so when you see jesus you see the father you see the holy spirit when you see god you see jesus you see the holy spirit when you see the holy spirit you see god and you see jesus you get my drift so that's what it means when it speaks about the oneness of god so when you're talking about the holy spirit what you're doing you're talking about god when you're talking about jesus you're talking about who god when you're talking about god you're talking about god so it is God. He embodies all of that. And I know the concept of that. It may make your brain feel like it wants to explode. But that's what the Bible says. And I can only tell you what the Bible says. I can't tell you something that is not there. Anyway, let's continue. And so it talks about also the fact that the water, the blood and the spirit, they are also working together. How do they work together? You remember what I said earlier about the cleansing? The water represents what? Cleansing. Eh? And what? The blood represents what? Cleansing. And the Holy Spirit represents what? Okay. Cleansing. So, they work together. They mean the same thing. They accomplish the same thing. They don't work against each other. Okay? I hope we are understanding this. And you can just go over back the text if you are not sure. But trust me, it is sweet. And the message is clear. Now, when you believe in the Son of God, you have the witness in you. Who is the witness? 
You remember what we said before? The Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit bear witness. Okay. So, the Holy Spirit is what? Help our convictions and our beliefs. So, when we have the Spirit in us, we are able to do what? Believe. It therefore means that we have come to terms with what the Holy Spirit has brought to our attention and our mind and our heart. And what? He, God. So the Holy Spirit do what? Testify of the Son. Testify of Jesus. So he bear witness. So just like you, when you are getting married again and you have a witness, somebody that co-sign, certificate, you have a witness. Now, when we refuse to believe, it therefore means that we have not accepted that truth. We don't believe the Holy Spirit. And therefore, we make God into a liar. Now, the question and the reading says, If we are able to believe man who is a sinner like you and me, we hold men at such high standard and we seem to believe everything that man say to us. And if I say jump, we say how oh, I. We have such confidence in him. And the truth is, man is a liar. Man is corrupt, but we believe them. How is it that you have such a hard time believing the truth that is in God's word? Believe in God. And so when we refuse to believe him, we are basically saying, God, you're lying. You're a liar. And we don't believe you. In fact, we don't want to hear anything I have to say. Because what you have to say is, there's, it, it just don't make no sense. It don't add up. But just as John 3, 16 say, For God so loved the world that he did what? Gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not what? Perish but have everlasting life. Here we are being reminded in the reading that when we believe in God, when we have accepted God and accepted his grace and mercy, we have gained eternal life. And I say amen. That is it. That is a promise. And so may we accept his gift of grace. May we welcome God into our hearts so that he can what? Transform us into his likeness. May we seek him daily. And may we walk by his side. Because with God, you have life. But separate from God, you will not have eternal life. So may God continue to lead you. And may God continue to bless you. And bless me. And keep all of us. And help us that we will accept his grace. And his gift of eternal life. Amen.